to four positions of additional practices sutra ananda when these good people have completely purified these 41 minds they further accomplish four kinds of wonderfully perfect additional practices commentary the bodhisattva the person practicing reaches a state of purity with regard to these 41 minds the 41 minds are the level of dry wisdom the ten faiths the ten dwellings the ten conducts the ten transferences the level of dry wisdom you remember is also called initial dry wisdom and the initial vara mind following these 41 positions are four further levels they are known as the wonderfully perfect additional practices they are heat summit patience first in the world sutra when the enlightenment of a buddha is just about to become a function of his own mind it is on the verge of emerging but has not yet emerged emerged and so it can be compared to the point just before wood ignites when it is drilled to produce fire therefore it is called the level of heat commentary this is the first of the four additional practices the level of heat the analogy is given of wood which is drilled to get fire this level is compared to the point just before the wood ignites when the enlightenment of a buddha is just about to become a function of his own mind means that what the buddhas are enlightened to and what he himself is enlightened to are the same thing when it is on the verge of emerging but has not yet emerged so it can be compared so the part just before wood ignites when it is drilled to produce a fire. The igniting of the wood being drilled is like enlightenment. The wood is right on the point of bursting into flame. With the enlightenment, there is also heat. Therefore, it is called the level of heat. This is the 42nd position of the Buddha's progression. Sutra, he continues on with his mind treading where the buddhas tread as if relying and yet not it is as if he were climbing a lofty mountain to the point where his body is in space but there remains a slight obstruction beneath him therefore it is called the level of the summit commentary he continues on with his mind treading where the buddhas tread as if relying and yet not his own mind goes down the path the Buddhas take. He seems to be dependent and yet he is also independent. A different analogy is used here. It is as if he were climbing a lofty mountain to the point where his body is in space, but there remains a slight obstruction beneath him. He is like, he's like someone climbing on a mountain and when he gets to the top, it is as if he physically enters into empty space because he is so high up. But under the, his feet, as he stands on the mountain, there is still a slight hindrance. He still has not yet ascended into empty space. Therefore, it is called the level of the summit. Sutra, when the mind and the Buddha are two and yet the same, he has well obtained the middle way. He is like someone who endures something when it seems impossible to either hold it in or let it out. Therefore, it is called the level of patience. Commentary When the mind and the Buddha are two and yet the same, he has well obtained the middle way. The mind is the Buddha, the Buddha is the mind. Although they are said to be two, they come together as one. What is the mind is the Buddha. There is no Buddha outside the mind. There is no mind outside the Buddha. The mind and the Buddha are in a state of suchness. He has genuinely obtained the principle and substance of the middle way. He is like someone who endures something when it seems impossible to either hold it in or let it out. It is as if a situation arises which a person must bear. 
it like to keep it contained but that is impossible at the same time it's impossible for him to let it out so at that point he bears with it he like to keep it in his mind and he like to release it he can't decide which would be the better thing to do so he bears with it he'd like to let it go but he can't give it up and yet he'd still like to let it go but this time he must be patient therefore it is called the level of patience it is the third of the additional practices sutra when numbers are destroyed there are no such designations as the middle way or as confusion and enlightenment this is called the level of being first in the world commentary when numbers are destroyed at the tenth transference the boundaries of the drama realm are destroyed now all numbers and boundaries are destroyed what is meant is the same as the zero i have talked about zero before it is the absence of numbers at the point there are no such designations as the middle way or as confusion and enlightenment perfection is total and the light brilliant there are no designations because it's a situation that's like zero there's nothing that can be said about zero zero means the absence of everything and yet everything outside the zero is contained within it the zero is the mother of all things but it is not designated as a mother because there isn't anything there to understand what i'm saying right now is enlightenment there isn't any confusion there isn't any enlightenment why isn't there any confusion because he is not confused why isn't there any enlightenment he's already enlightened what further enlightenment could there be for there to be no confusion and no enlightenment is zero all the mountains the rivers the great earth the plants and all the myriad appearances come forth from it there's no designation for enlightenment and confusion or for the middle way even though there's no name for this state we still have to call it something so we force the issue and call it the level of being first in the world it's first in the world because there is no second this is the last of the additional practices the ten positions of the ten grounds sutra ananda these good men have successfully penetrated through to great buddhi their enlightenment is like in is entirely like the first come ones they have fathomed the state of buddhahood this is called the ground of happiness commentary ananda these good men have successfully penetrated through to great body the good men are the bodhisattvas who have obtained the level of being first in the world although the text says he has successfully penetrated through to great body there really isn't anything that's been penetrated through to their enlightenment is entirely like the first come ones. Their enlightenment is the first come one. The first come one is enlightenment. They have become enlightened to that which the first come one has become enlightened to. They can be called the th as first come one when they have enlightened to that zero. And yet the zero isn't anything at all, so don't get attached to it. They have fathomed the state of Buddhahood. True emptiness is the state of being nothing at all. But when they fathom the state of a Buddha, then within the true emptiness arises a wonderful existence. That wonderful existence is happiness. Oh, so originally it's just that way. That's the arising of happiness. I didn't understand before, but now I do. They are inexpressibly happy. This is called the ground of happiness is the first ground sutra the differences enter into identity the identity is destroyed this is called the ground of living filth commentary on the previous ground there was still happiness and so an identity still existed too although there were no designations 
there was still an identity that was when the differences enter into identity and become one that is also the phenomena and the nominant are united the nominant still remains now when they reach the second ground the identity is destroyed the second ground is called the ground of living filth which means that they separate from ignorance basically there isn't much ignorance left by this time for their enlightenment nature enlightened natures are already like that of a buddha a slight bit of attachment a little defilement remains for them now identity is destroyed their likeness so the buddha ceases to be thus to return to the source to go back to the nature of the treasury of the first come one which is a great storehouse of light it has no name or appearance this is called the ground of living filth happiness is still a kind of defilement if there is something you like then you still have emotional reactions at the second ground all the defilements are left behind subtle ignorance is also lessened but at this level the ignorance is still not completely cut off sutra at the point of ultimate purity brightness comes forth this is called the ground of emitting light commentary a bodhisattva on the first ground does not know the state of a bodhisattva on the second ground a bodhisattva on the second ground doesn't know the state of a bodhisattva on the third ground at the point of ultimate purity brightness comes forth the previous ground was that of living filth but as long as there is a necessity to leave it there must still be defilement only when one has completely left the filth is one clean let's take sweeping as an example we sweep in order to clean up the floor we put the broom aside when the floor is clean as long as we are still sweeping it isn't clean yet when we, he reaches the ultimate purity light comes forth there is brightness so the third ground is called the ground of emitting light sutra when the brightness becomes ultimate enlightenment is formed this is called the ground of blazing wisdom commentary when the brightness becomes ultimate enlightenment is formed the light reaches its maximum and the enlightened nature is perfected this is called the ground of blazing wisdom blazing is descriptive of the wisdom that is bright like a torch sutra no identity or difference can be attained this is called the ground of invincibility commentary no identity or difference can be attained not only are things that are the same identical at this stage all things are identical the bodhisattva cannot come to any distinction between sameness and difference there is no way to represent them because basically there is no identity or difference this is called the ground of invincibility there isn't anything that can overcome this level of understanding it transcends all the other previous grounds this is the name given to the fifth level of the stages of the bodhisattva's development is it the case that one bodhisattva reaches the ground of invincibility yes it is the case that one bodhisattva does and yet this one bodhisattva is not just a single bodhisattva there is only one and yet there is not here is where the buddha drama is to be found one bodhisattva comes up to this level but millions of billions of other bodhisattvas also come up to this level for instance when someone earns a phd degree is that one person alone in earning it certainly that one person has earned it but someone else can also earn one everyone who has one has earned it and so how many earn one millions not just one the same principle applies here probably more bodhisattvas than their sand, sand grains in the Ganges river are certified 
as having attained each of these grounds. Sutra with unconditioned true suchness, the nature is spotless and brightness is revealed. This is called the ground of manifestation. Commentary with unconditioned true suchness, the nature is spotless and brightness is revealed. It is unconditioned and yet there is nothing which is not conditioned. True suchness refers to the nature of the treasury of the first come one. It is the one true Dharma realm. With the unconditioned true suchness, everything is in a state of suchness. Everything is true. There is nothing which is not true, nothing which is not in a state of suchness. The nature is extremely pure, and light shines forth. This is the sixth ground called the ground of manifestation. That's because the Bodhisattva's nature reveals itself. Sutra, coming to the farthest limits of true suchness, is called the ground of traveling far. Commentary, true suchness has no limits and no farthest point. So how can this be? Again, it is descriptive. There really isn't any end to true suchness because it really doesn't have any limits. So that's why the sutra says it this way. Coming to the farthest limits of true suchness is just like when we say that empty space is obliterated. But since empty space isn't even a substance to begin with, how can it be obliterated? This is the same kind of attempt to, to, to describe what is basically beyond comprehension. True suchness doesn't have any limits. It includes the ten Dharma realms with all their beings. How could it have a boundary? What's beyond the ten Dharma realms? Nothing. And so he says, coming to the farthest limits of true suchness, that is to travel far indeed. How far? Who knows? All we can say is that it's called the ground of traveling far. Ordinary people could never get there. Only a Bodhisattva of the seventh ground can go that far. Sutra, the single mind of true suchness, is called the ground of immovability. Commentary, the single mind of true suchness, is the one true Dharma realm. It is said, it was said above that the mind is the Buddha and the Buddha is the mind. Now, true suchness is the mind and the mind is the Buddha. There is no distinction between true suchness and the mind. Since true suchness has no limits, the Bodhisattva's mind has no limits. When his mind has no limits, where does he go? He doesn't go anywhere. Therefore, it is called the ground of immovability. Unmoving in the Bodhimanda, he pervades the Dharma realm. This is the eighth ground. Sutra bringing forth the function of true suchness is called the ground of good wisdom. Commentary at the eighth ground, true suchness and the mind become one, and this was called the ground of not moving. But to simple but simply be unmoving and to never make a move would be useless. However, within true suchness, the function now comes forth. What is the function of true suchness? The function of true suchness is gigantic. If it was small, it would have only a single function. But this gigantic function can be used however one wishes. According with conditions, one is unmoving. Unmoving one accords with conditions. One constantly accords with conditions and yet is constantly unmoving. One is constantly unmoving and yet constantly accords with conditions. Such a functioning must be connected with wisdom. Therefore, bringing forth the function of true suchness is called the ground of good wisdom. This is the ninth ground. This wisdom is totally true and real. Sutra, Ananda, all bodhisattvas at this point and beyond have reached the effortless way in their cultivation. Their merit and virtue are perfected and so, all the previous positions are also called the level of cultivation. Commentary, Ananda, you should understand that all bodhisattvas at this point and beyond have reached the effortless way in their cultivation. From the beginning, 
The level of dry wisdom, also known as the initial viral mite, so the combination of the ninth ground, there are a total of 54 positions. When the Bodhisattvas have passed through to this point, they've reached the effortless way. They have graduated. Their merit and virtue are perfected in their study leading toward Buddhahood. They are just about to earn this degree. They are about to become Buddhas and so all the previous positions are also called the level of cultivation. Sutra Then with a wonderful cloud of compassionate protection, one covers the sea of Nirvana. This is called the ground of the Dharma cloud. Commentary Wonder and compassion are dharmas. Protection and covering belong to the analogy of the cloud and represent a sheltering influence. Then with a wonderful cloud of compassionate protection, one covers the sea of Nirvana. One shelters all living beings. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas emerge from the sea of Nirvana. And so the tenth ground is called the ground of the Dharma cloud. At this level, one shelters and protects all living beings.